Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's App Manager in Action webcast. We're excited to share this info with you about App Manager 8, and certainly happy to have you join us today to learn a little bit more about it. I'm Travis Green, Product Marketing Manager for the App Manager product line, and I'm joined today by Mickey Schneebel, the Product Manager for App Manager. Uh, Mickey, go ahead and say hello. Hey, Travis, and hey, everyone on the phone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I don't know if we have anyone from Europe, but if we have anyone from Hamburg or Germany, I say, guten Tag. So for those of you who don't know Mickey, and I think everybody here has probably heard Mickey before, but uh, Mickey is our German engineering behind App Manager and the reason why it's so precise. All right, <laughs> let's continue. Um, before we begin, uh, let me let everybody know that this session is being recorded and you will get a link at the conclusion uh, once we get it posted to the site. So look for that and you'll be able to have the replay, and for those who weren't able to make it to today's call, uh, they'll have that available as well. And feel free to post your question there on the on the bottom right interface in uh, in our go to webinar uh, interface here, and we will try to get to those as we get through the the presentation. But if uh, we don't, then we'll certainly follow up with you at the end. So today what we wanted to cover were a few things. We'll give you some background about how we developed App Manager 8 and a little bit of information about how it's installed and, and what we are covering there. We'll go through the features and benefits, as you would imagine, and basically the way we're going to approach that is just to have Mickey demo the actual product for you and poke around in there and show you what's in there. So that's going to be a great opportunity for some question and answer. And we'll talk to you a little bit about how we expect uh, customers to adopt App Manager 8, although we'll, we will have some follow-up webinars. This is just the first in a series where we will describe for you uh, upgrade paths, that sort of thing, and, and there will be more information forthcoming on that. And finally, we'll point you in a direction of where you can get some more information about App Manager 8, particularly in our new uh, community group called the App Manager HQ, and we would encourage you to sign up there and, and have that continue that conversation, really, with the the product management team. All right, let's first take a little bit of a glance at the background on App Manager 8. And we wanted to point out what we're delivering in App Manager 8. It's not the entire App Manager suite. Most of you are aware that the App Manager suite consists of a number of different products, things like all the modules and analysis center. So App Manager 8, when we, when we re use that terminology, we're referring to the core product. It's not uh, all of the other pieces that you see here. And by core, what I mean is the agent, the management servers, QDBs, and control center specifically. Uh, but you're, of course, aware in most cases that we do update the rest of the suite um, independently. And you've seen a lot of those releases via notifications on our community board as well. So anything else you want to add there, Mickey? Yeah, quick comment here. So on the agent side, uh, with the App Manager 8 release, there's a new Windows agent. However, the Unix agent is the one that is uh, available today, the 7.1 agent that has not been updated with the App Manager 8 release. Also, when we're talking about App Manager 8, uh, this is really not an 8.0 release. So this is 8.0.1, so it's actually Service Pack 1 already. Um, as we had a controlled availability, and uh, we were working with customers in the beta program and later in the controlled availability. And they installed AppMensch already in their production environments. And from the experience we learned with that installation and some hiccups we have seen in the production environment, we uh, were going back, uh, did some changes and corrections uh, in the release. And what you get today on the web is the 801 release. So it's uh, something that's already in production with uh, some customers, and it's uh, very successful. That's great. So, uh, Mickey, we also had one other question, which was uh, already came up, which is uh, when is App Manager 8 going to be released to the public? Do you want to take that one? It, it, it is released to the public, right? Yeah, it is. So uh, we, we are officially generally available. You can, If you have access to the lock resources on netiq.com, you can download it today. There is a short questionnaire that uh, some of you probably have already seen, but if not, uh, we'll give you a heads up on that. We, we just want to know what size environment and what your plans are for upgrades so that our tech support team can support you as, as best as um, 
they, they can prepare to do that given what your unique configuration is going to look like. There's only about, I think, seven or eight questions on there. So if you would please answer that for us, and then you'll have access to the downloads uh, right away. All right, let's move on. Uh, first of all, we wanted to focus on what is in App Manager 8 that would be something that you can take advantage of. And, and so these are really the top reasons. You'll hear us refer back to these three reasons as we go through the presentation, and we'll provide more details on them. But in general, what we hope to accomplish with this release was to reduce the amount of time and skills that you need to manage App Manager. One of the things that we heard from our customers as we interviewed them as we were developing the product was that it really we, we're, we're, we don't have the people in our staff that we used to have. Uh, there's a lot of you out there who maybe were on teams of three in the past, and now it's down to just you. And you've got maybe more tools than App Manager to manage. And so you've asked us to make it easier, more usable, uh, make the product something that takes care of itself more. And so we've, we've really put a lot of focus into trying to simplify and, and reduce the time it takes to manage App Manager itself. We also heard from you that you've got environments that change very rapidly. Uh, that's primarily driven by technologies such as uh, VMware or virtualization. And because of the, the increased pace of change, you're looking for the tools, in this case App Manager, to take on some of the workload for you and recognizing that things are changing in the environment and make adjustments uh, either automatically or at least give you information about those changes so that you can respond to them better. And then finally, we've had uh, a lot of requests to reduce some of the costs of App Manager, especially in the, the underlying infrastructure. And so we've, we've done some things to try to improve that as well. So that's uh, a really high-level summary of what you're going to see in App Manager 8. But why don't we jump into some specific features and benefits so you can get a sense of how we play that out. So if we move on to the, this overview, this is um, a, a summary, if you will, of the features and benefits. This same summary is available in a white paper that's available on our website. And if you want more details on uh, all of the new features and benefits, you can go to netiq.com and look at the, the product page for App Manager, and you'll find a, a white paper there under the What's New section that will provide you with more details on this. All right, so the first feature we wanted to focus on is a ton of enhancements that have gone into App Manager Control Center. Some of you in the past have probably been frustrated, perhaps, with um, some of the, the capabilities in the Control Center. You wanted more in there. Not everything that was in the old operator console was available in Control Center. Uh, in larger environments, it, it tended to be a little bit slow. And you, you wanted it to be more intuitive, more usable in general. And as I mentioned earlier, that's been a big focus of what we've tried to develop here. So Mickey, why don't you show right. us what we've done with Control Center? So, so also closing the gap between the operator console and control centers so that you can only use one console going forward. So I hope you can see the, the screen now where we have the new control center 8. Travis, is the screen coming up? Yep, we see it. Cool. So what you see first is it's a modern look and feel. We have the ribbons on top here. However, I do like to use most of my screen for the actual content for, for what App Manager is providing me. So I can just simply minimize that ribbon here. I still have the buttons available, but uh, so you get more screen real estate for what's really important. On, on the right side, you still have you know your status uh, update and, and, and these flags, and I will talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, you have your tasks here, and you can expand and collapse them as well. And I need that part of the screen as well, so I just hit the pin here uh, and uh, put it to the side. I can also just drag and drop uh, a tab, like the task tab here, and put it to any uh, area of the screen, and you see where it will end up uh, if I uh, let it go there. Let me see if I can make it happen. There, the tasks are now here. It doesn't make sense, so let's bring it back over here. You see the control center UI is totally customizable, and at the moment, I just want to have as much space as possible. So on the left side, there's something totally new, and uh, by looking at it, you won't realize at the moment it's the tree. So here, your management, your, your management groups, 
and if you open up a management group, uh, you see in the server view, there's a plus sign on top. So if I hit that plus sign, you see actually the servers in that server view, based on your filters, based on your configuration, you see your servers here. And if you go into one of these servers, you can go down uh, to the detail information of the objects. If you click on one object, the uh, big pane here on the right side uh, changes and it gives you the, the detail information of that object. So it's exactly the same tree you have in the operator console. Now it's in control center and it also shows you the status of the objects. So and it rolls it up to the top. You can configure how much roll up you want to have here on the management group level, um, but you have the same functionality. And these uh, status indicators uh, are now working in the back end. So these are all back end uh, tasks so that the UI control center itself is purely a presentation layer and therefore it's much lighter, it's, it's much faster, it's much more responsive, it, it works better over you know network connections now. We've seen that with some customers already. Um, and it has uh, all these new features and it's closing the gap between uh, control center and the operator console. So um, by looking to other improvements, you, you see already the charts here, and I, I show you more about that later. Uh, but also, uh, if we go into a view like the event view, we improved all, all views. So I'm just showing you the event view really quick. You see the parent child event here, and you can open up uh, the parent and seeing the charts. I personally don't like that view. So I normally switch just back to the chart only event view. You can see that's possible. Then you have this look and feel. And if you like, you can also bring in the event message. Then it shows this way. And if you only want to see what's going on uh, on a specific topic, on a specific server, uh, like on uh, server 201, I can just type in uh, the first row here. And that's actually a filter row. And I only want to see the severity tense. And you see it automatically filters down to what you're looking for by just typing in in the first row. And we have hundreds of these little features making your day-to-day -day work uh, much more easy and much faster. And that may be like the it. inevitable question that's already come in. Um, as, as cool as this looks, is there still an operator console in version 8? There is an operator console. So, and there's one single dialog that is not in control center, which is the QDB preferences, which you use to uh, set how long you keep data in the QDB, when do you automatically move events to, from close to delete, things like that. You normally uh, configure these settings once in the QDB lifetime or maybe twice when you do some changes, but that is not a dialog you're going back every time. So that dialog is still in the operator console, and the operator console is released with AM8 and is still functional. However, it's most of the new features, uh, even in AM7 already, most of the new features are only available in Control Center. Okay, so um, Travis also mentioned the responsiveness in large environments. And when we're talking about large environments, we're talking to 2,000 up to 10,000 agents in an environment. And if you imagine you open up a tree here with 10,000 servers, that could take a while. I obviously don't have 10,000 servers here, just a little bit over 100. Um, but what this tree does, it loads on demand. So, so this UI doesn't load everything up front like the operator console does. Everything you see here is on demand and whenever you click somewhere, you get a quick message like, you know, retrieving information, um, just, you know, just wait a second. Um, it's telling you immediately, I, I got your request, I'm working on it in the background. And you can go somewhere else if you like. We don't block the UI while we're doing something. Uh, it's all background task and, and you're free to go somewhere else if it takes too long and go back later. All right, thanks Mickey. So in general, let's take a look at what sort of benefits to expect. Obviously we've uh, done a lot of work to improve the performance with the, the technical changes you've seen there, a lot of work in the background, the plumbing of the product to, to really make this 
the, the usability that, our, that, that really everyone expects these days. Uh, and the usability also from a, just a, a productivity perspective, being able to filter and sort and search, that sort of thing. And hopefully what that means is that even as you bring in new folks to provide management in your environment, that you'll find the new control center very intuitive, easy to learn, easy to use. All right, let's move on to our next feature, which is Health Check Self Monitoring. And really what we're trying to do here is answer the question, who's monitoring them? Monitoring tools. There's been a lot of uh, implementations of monitoring of App Manager, but we wanted to make you. Can you hear me now? Sorry. There's been a lot we of field can hear you, but you're dropping off. All right. Um, well, Mickey, why don't you take it away? Okay. Thanks, Travis. So, yeah, the old question is monitoring the monitoring tool, um, and the answer is it's, it's app manager doing that uh, pretty well. And uh, we, we also, with the health check and self-monitoring, not only uh, make sure that your monitoring tool is what it's supposed to do and, and you get the data and the reliability, it's also telling you if there are any uh, any problems with your configuration. As in the past, we've seen that sometimes App Manager becomes a little bit unreliable if the configuration is not ideal. And, and we try uh, to capture these uh, areas as well. So let me try to show that. So first, um, you see two new management groups that will be there by default. The, the one here is the agent managed computers, and all your agents go in there. And uh, events about the heartbeat will, will go in here. So what's the heartbeat? The heartbeat is a technology that makes sure that data and events end-to-end -end go from the agent to the QDB to control center. So we make sure that uh, as soon as uh, data and events don't come through from an agent, it will raise an alert here and you can see it. So you see I, I already have one, but it's you know informational. As I was just stopping my management service, and then you don't get 800 or 400 events from all the agents talking to that management server. You get just one event saying the management server is down. So you know every agent behind that will uh, not communicating. And once the uh, MS is up again and running, um, it automatically closes that issue and, and Uh, so there's a lot of logic in here, and even if the MS goes down, we don't need to have the job working on the MS. So there's a lot of intelligence in the back end now, uh, raising these alerts um, to make sure that all components are monitored, regardless of what component is up and down. And then you have the other management group, which um, gives you an overview. Uh, it pretty much draws a map of your app manager infrastructure. So it tells you where your database is, your control center, and your uh, uh, QDB, your app manager repository, then where the active components was control center, where's the deployment service, where, where your management services. So if you open up one of these views and go into a machine like, like this one here, you see that there is a new object called app manager server. So we actually have an app manager module, an app manager discovery that discovers the role of the server. So you can see this is an agent. This is a CQS, control center, database, cache manager, and deployment server. Um, also, all related services uh, show up here, and you can monitor them, or they automatically get monitored. And you can also see security settings here, which is very helpful if, if, if you want to create groups based on these settings, like you know, who's the valid management server. Uh, for that agent or, you know, uh, all the security settings you can have here. So um, that is uh, the component, and as soon as there's a problem, um, you, will, you will get an alert, uh, like I have here on the database. Um, if I look into that event, uh, you see it's telling me there's a misconfiguration. So my QDB is... Uh, you know, installed with the default SQL settings. The default SQL settings is that uh, my grow rate is one megabyte, which means as soon as my database grows, if I get more data and events in, it grows by one megabyte. So if you have a large environment, you can imagine this can happen every five minutes then, and you have a grow rate of one megabyte every five minutes makes the database 
pretty busy by you know adding just a little space more and more and more and more and we have seen that then the QDB becomes the bottleneck and slows down the entire environment so we tell you at least you should have 256 megabytes in here and then it's much better you can go beyond but you get these configuration uh, recommendations from us here through that new app manager helps so let's take a look to the actual chaos to I told you there is something like an app manager module and it's it's called app manager helps and helps it's here let me close this one um so there there are just three chaoses in here uh sorry four chaoses in here and two knowledge groups groups and these ksgs uh, are automatically deployed as a policy through these new management groups. You can alter these management groups and you know change the settings if you don't want to have it uh, deployed by default, but it's on by default. So as soon as you install App Manager 8, you have the uh, self-monitoring enabled and it will tell you as soon as a machine goes down or, or service is not responding. So let's take a look to the heartbeat. Many of you have uh, implemented your own heartbeat or used what we ship with the AM7 CD on the unsupported folder, which looks for data point in a specific time. We now deploy these uh, new KSs, uh, and with these KSs, we're creating data points and events that don't show up in the data table and in the event table that goes into the database. So we have the end-to-end -end measuring there. And we know data and events come through, but we don't mess up your, you know, your production environment with, with data you don't want to see. But this heartbeat can do way more than that. Um, it, once a machine is not responsive and there's a data point missing, you can go here and uh, do some investigation and you can check how far you want to go. So do you want to see if the ping gets through? So you can distinct between is that an agent failure, is that a machine failure or network failure. Um, and based on your infrastructure and uh, firewall settings, you can enable or disable more of these uh, checks here. Also, uh, to make sure nothing happens to your agent, we have that new monitoring option here for the jobs. So we, we check if data point comes through from that KS, but we'll also monitor each single job on an agent. And as soon as one job, uh, let's say, uh, behaves uh, different than, than expected, for instance, the runtime takes longer. Usually the average runtime for a job is uh, a couple of hundred milliseconds. If out of the sudden the job takes several seconds, um, we can raise an alert and say, uh, there's a job who's misbehaving, take a look before it becomes a problem. So Mickey, we've got a, a few questions here. Um, you want to pause and take a look at that or do you want to wrap sure. up or looking at All right. Um, so the, one of the questions is, with configuration issues, can that alert data be forwarded via alternative methods such as a, an SNMP trap? So since most of these alerts come through the jobs, um, and, and let me show you the other jobs like the CC components, you can see here lots of options where we can monitor. You can definitely have an action with these jobs, and this action then can create an email or an SNMP trap or whatever you like, um, you, you have all the actions available. Okay. And is Heartbeat deployed automatically with upgrade to App Manager 8 or does it have to be added with existing monitoring policy? So it's uh, automatically, as I said, it's on by default and at the end of this webinar we show you one slide where you do understand what component adds, you know, what feature not in detail, but uh, we will talk about this at the end of, of this slide deck. Okay. And is the Heartbeat KS available for App Manager 7? Yes, definitely. So, so uh, you need to have the AM, the QDB on AM8, but the, the agent can be on 7. Uh, so the Heartbeat has nothing to do with the agent, it has to do with the QDB. As I said, a lot of logic, a lot of intelligence is in the back end here. Okay. Uh, one question a little bit uh, off or really on the previous topic is are you able to dra drop and drag jobs and control center similar to the way that we've, we're used to doing it over in an operator console? 
that's a nice question as I should probably have shown it. So you have a new uh, KS pane here on the left with, with all possible KSs you have. And you can just take, uh, so let me find something that probably works under NT. You can just take the disk space KS here and drag and drop it from there to any machine or any server view or uh, yeah, any any grouping and deploy it from here. As soon as I drop it, the job pops up and asks me for configuration, and, and that would be an ad hoc job like you do in the operator console. So we really took care to close the gap between OC and CC. All right. Uh, one other kind of general question is: Do we know how many MSs uh, management servers can App Manager eight support? So as far as I know, there's no hard limit. Um, and um, for App Manager 7, there's a great white paper available uh, from our experts uh, in the company who, who are talking about how to set up App Manager. Uh, we probably will update that with AMA data. Uh, but again, as far as I know, there's no limit in how many MSs you have. It's the question, what makes sense and what's really needed. Um, right. as, at some point, the more MSs you need it, uh, or add it to your server, the more connections you have to the QDB, and we know there's a relation with connections and performance. So um, it's probably not a good idea to, to add hundreds, but I've seen customers definitely doing four up to eight MSs per QDB. And sometimes okay. there are other reasons than scalability. There are reasons like DMZs and uh, geographical reasons. Sure. And, and one more sort of general question is um, someone's interested in a module for SCCM, I, I assume that's System Center Configuration Manager. Uh, is I, I know we don't have a module for it. Would you recommend something like Module Builder for the sort of apps on Windows? So in general, for, for everything that's not out of the box where we don't have a built-in knowledge by providing you module, uh, you have the uh, the the KSs that come with the H with the WinOS module, the Unix module. They, they are great general KSs uh, who can do a lot of uh, the availability and performance monitoring. If you're looking for something specific, a uh, module builder can go further into log files and uh, into a performance counter. If that doesn't work, um, then you should talk to our tech support and ask for an enhancement request and file an official enhancement request to ask for that module. Uh, that's the way we track it, and we also uh, keep track of what's needed in the field. All right. Uh, I tell you what, for the sake of time, um, we, we are getting some really good questions, and we'll try to get to many of them as we can, but uh, we're going to uh, move on to um, our next feature, which is Delta Discovery. Uh, clearly, with the health check self-monitoring, the benefit there is we've improved the reliability, but not just that. The ability to get information about the problems that are out there and really offer those configuration suggestions so that you can configure your environment to optimize its performance. So with Delta Discovery, as I already mentioned, we're really trying to address a couple of questions here. How do you keep pace with change to make sure that there's no gaps in your monitoring coverage? And how do you know that there are actually changes in your environment? Because that manager's out there, it's discovering things. Wouldn't it be great to have that information available to, um, to use for change management processes or things of that nature. So, Mickey, what can you tell us about that? I think we all have been in the situation where we are the last to know, right? So someone added a database, someone added, you know, more memory, new disk, whatever, to your environment. And um, at the end of the month, reporting data is missing because uh, it was not in the monitoring policy, or you're using a uh, change management process where you don't automatically monitor everything by default, which is possible with App Manager by using the monitoring policies. So there, there are two great benefits with the Delta Discovery. Um, Delta Discovery first um, is a discovery that works much faster uh, than uh, the, the current AM7 discovery as it, um, it stores the information of the discovered object locally and whenever it runs, it checks with the local uh, cache, and if there has been no change to the previous discovery, it does not report back to the middle tier and back end. So it takes load from these components, and if there's nothing to report, it stays silent. And that makes the discovery more efficient. You can run it more often. 
Uh, but also, if there's a change reported, it can report just on the change. And, and that's, that's a big difference to what we had before with uh, App Manager 7. So first of all, you can have quicker discovery. Second, you, you know about changes. So uh, let's take a look to my demo uh, management group here. Um, to the discovery jobs. Uh, let me find it here. So all discovery jobs support uh, the Delta discovery. If I open like Active Directory, the first one here, you now realize there's a new tab here called Discover. And that tab um, is asking you if you want to do a full discovery all the time. So you can keep the, the current discovery behavior or you can switch to Delta Discovery. And then for sure you should do a, a full discovery if you don't have anything already uh, at the first duration. And from then on it only do, does the Delta. And then you can subscribe uh, to changes like additions, deletions, relocations, renamings, or even changes in the property values. Like if, you're, uh, if your memory uh, increased from four gigabyte to uh, 128 gigabytes. You know, you will get an event for that as well. So you can uh, select the uh, severity here and, and, and that's uh, pretty much it. Um, so there's also a wizard uh, to roll out or to update your current discoveries like, you know, my NT discovery should be updated. Uh, so let me see, I have three jobs running here in my environment. I only want to have two of them and I want them updated with Delta Discovery. So I can make my changes here and, and then once I hit finish, it automatically updates these current discovery jobs. So that makes it really easy for you uh, to get that feature in your current environment. And let me show what you get from there. So I have a uh, event view here called Changes and that event view is configured to show me only uh, information from discoveries, from Delta Discoveries. And if I open one of these events, you see there was a change in my temp DB, and here's the old value, here's the new value. This is the kind of information we'll get for, for any object if there was a change. Um, but for sure you can configure and you can disable. Uh, if, if you're only interested in uh, additions, um, that would be one example here where someone added a database and I called it critical DB because that's what it sometimes is. It's a database you want to like to monitor, you don't have a policy for that, or it's maybe a database you don't want to monitor as it's a development database and you want to write an exclusion for your monitoring policy with Delta Discovery you will know. All right, a few more questions come in. Maybe we can uh, get a few of these knocked out. Uh, first of all, does the integration of the operator console mean that it will no longer exist as a separate application, or will it be available as a standalone option? I, I think we somewhat addressed that, but let's make sure everybody's clear on that one. I'm not sure I understand that. The operator console is always a separate application, right? Right, and it's it hasn't gone away, I guess is the point. It, it hasn't gone away. It's It's not, you know... It's it's not getting a different product or anything. Um, However, all the new features are in Control Center, right? And and we will be very careful with removing the operator console from the product suite, as we know many of you have built processes around. So we will definitely uh, talk to you uh, before we uh, have before we consider removing that UI from the product. Okay. Uh, regarding KSs, knowledge scripts. The question is, can you copy and create new KSs and KS groups within the new control center? Yes, you can. Okay. And uh, can the tree view be hidden for a given user to avoid having access to, a ser to server properties and concentrate in events and or jobs? So the control, set, control center is working on, on these uh, permissions. And with AM8, we have new permissions. We are more granular than before. Uh, and for each management group, you can have uh, different security settings and therefore you can really control what users will see and what users can do with what they see. And there's another new feature in AM8. I told you there are a lot of features I cannot show here as we just have an hour. Um, but there's another feature that management groups can inherit security settings. So if you have a structure like I had with 
management group and the management group, you can set the security on the root management group and then automatically it inherits all sub-management groups. All right, so let's recap the Delta discovery that we just saw. It, it's got obviously much stronger support for dynamic environments because we can, we can run discovery quite often now as opposed to doing it once or twice a day. And we have now this, these events based on detected changes. And so you can use those events as notifications to people. You can pass them along to um, ticketing systems. Uh, you can even use a product like NetIQ Aegis to tr use those events to trigger workflows to, to handle changes and that sort of thing as well, if you'd like. Or you can even automate the, the rollout of policy with, uh, with App Manager. All right, next thing we want to take a look at is something that uh, we all love to take a look at, which is service map views. And ultimately, what we heard from you guys regarding the service maps is we wanted to make it easier to, to build and maintain those and give us more options for us to, to build these service maps and just make it all more intuitive. So Mickey wants to show us how we've done that. Right, I think the best way to do that is to create a new service map to show you some of the new features. Um, so most of that is pretty much the same. You've seen that before. So let me just change my grid size here real quick. And now I have a blank page where I can now start put service in it. Um, so let's bring up that dialog, hit the pin so that it stays. Uh, make this smaller. Now I have a nice list of my machines here. So you have seen that before in AIM7, but one big difference is I can just take uh, a list of machines. I can multi-select machines and just drag and drop them here and have them all at once here and then I can start put them into the right place. Um, you can do the same with the with the sub objects. So if I go to machine and down here I want to add the file system, the CPU, the memory and the network. I just multi-select them, drag and drop, drop them here and uh, have them immediately available. So that takes way less time to create these service maps. Um, then also, uh, if you don't like the icons and you see they're all new, so we have a whole set of new icons, it's a new library, um, they come in four different sizes, so it's not that the icons just get stretched, they, you know, if you select a different icon size, uh, like uh, 24 pixel, uh, it comes uh, nicely as this is really a rendered 24 pixel image. Um, also, you can change the entire icon. So if, uh, let's say, my demo computer is a SQL database and I don't like that machine icon here, I can just go in here, say, use custom icon, and you see here's the library of uh, new icons we have, and you will definitely find whatever you're looking for. And I'm looking for a database icon, so let me use that and you see it shows up as a database now. Um, to answer the question that you have in mind right now, no, you cannot extend that library at the moment. This You cannot uh, put custom icons in it. It's uh, a library that comes with control center and is uh, static at this point. Um, and there's another very, very important feature here. Uh, if I have something, um, you know, if, if I want to have someone understanding what the status is without understanding what the icon means. Like our CPU icon, you know, we can discuss if that's the nicest icon you can have for CPU. However, if you want just show someone it's green, yellow, or red, what you can do is you can hit that uh, checkbox down here and say, show me the status indicator only. And um, on the map, it doesn't change. As soon as I check this map in, you see, this icon doesn't show me the CPU icon. It shows me just the status indicator and the size of the icon. So that gives you a great feature where you can make these traffic-like maps, giving you uh, a great view, uh, you know, what's, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. So, so let, me, let me show you something I've prepared here. So going to my data center overview. So this is my overview map, and I have three data centers. Um, so I used a different icon. I, I, I don't use the map icon. I use the building here as these are data centers. And the one here down in India is a little bit smaller, so I made it smaller. This one is red, so let's scroll in. 
and you see this is the, the, the view I'm talking about where you immediately see where you have a problem. You have a nice background picture, you put these uh, status indicators on top and anyone, you know, all managers should be happy with that kind of view as they see, okay, database, have a problem here, let's drill it. And then you see your data center here, your flow, and you see that, um, you know, uh, these two machines have problems. Um, here's another one uh, where it looks like a machine. It's actually a map so I can drill in. If you have time to do that for your machines, you can do make it look like there's a machine you drill in and then you see uh, how the machine is built, what's important on that machine for you to know. So let's go back and select that one <coughs> machine here and I bring up uh, the tabs down here, as I promised before, I talk a little bit about charts as well. And what I have here is I have CPU and uh, memory, top memory processes. And you see that doesn't work well in one shot. The CPU is going up to 100, but my memory is going up to whatever, you know, uh, almost 3 million. So having that in one shot is, is not ideal. But with AppManage 8, it's actually no problem. So let me uh, show you what feature we have for this. Um, you can have it tapped, which doesn't, you know, give you big benefit in that case, um, as each chart would be on a different screen on a different tab. You can have it stacked, which will help you, uh, or time aligned, which is the feature I like to talk about. Uh, it gives you uh, both shots on the same timeline, on the same x-axis, and the x-axis is only there once, but having different y-axis. And um, therefore you can now compare the one chart with the other chart. And um, that's, that's real nice. Um, so obviously these two shots doesn't make sense to get really compared as CPU has nothing to do with memory in this case. But you get the idea what you can do and you still can double click uh, on, on any data point um, to get the uh, information you're looking for. Oops, you can zoom in as well. So let me double click again. Oops. Excellent. It worked before. So um, there it is. Okay. I might don't have data details on the other chart. So uh, you get the list of values here, and if you double click further, you see what is the uh, the process who's taking the uh, memory right away here, and it's the SQL Server at the moment. So you still, yep. All right, a relevant question here: Does this new chart tab fully replace the Chart Console standalone application? No, you still have the the uh, Chart Console available. You still can uh, call it by doing a right click on these things and say, "Draw me a chart." As the Chart Console uh, has uh, some few features like the three D people like. Um, also has uh, some some other graph types if, if, if they are needed. Um, so we realized there's still some features in there uh, we we should not remove. So the chart console is still available, it's still working, it's uh, easy to call it from control center. However, uh, I, I would like to hear from you if um, the new chart tab in the server view on the or in the service maps uh, might be in replacement uh, you know, or what's missing from your end. So, um, and, and that feedback would probably be best to put into the uh, App Manager HQ group on community, right? Exactly. Okay. Right. Uh, before we move away from service maps, a couple of questions there. Um, can you add management groups to the view so when servers are added or removed, the map is updated? No, you can, you can add uh, event views, server views, um, but you cannot add management groups. So okay. there's no change in that feature. That's the same as you have in AM7. And can you add or represent objects that are monitored by NetIQ in the service map? I think we addressed that. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, I tell you what. Let's move on to our next feature. Um, clearly, with service map view improvements, we've made it easier to create and maintain those, so we hope that uh, allows you to take better advantage of them. Next we want to talk about our new features around data export design, and one of the things we heard from you is, you know, when there's events going on, people are trying to troubleshoot, 
we need to make it easier to export just the event that they're interested in, um, share that data easier, and, and make it easier to find it and distribute it. So, Mickey, tell us uh, what we can look forward to there. Right. So, um, the the export feature ha has a lot of uh, benefits. So, let me show you one in the server view here. So, if you have a server view, and let's say uh, these are all your database server, all your Exchange servers, uh, what you can do, you can go and just right click and say uh, print uh, export email and then you can do selected servers if you have any selected or all servers. And then the new screen comes up uh, giving you that list and you can then hand out that list to your administrator saying here's the list of servers I have for, for database or for messaging. Is that everything we, we need to have? Is there any server missing? Or you can use that for uh, documentation reasons and save it. So um, let's take a look how this list works. Oh, there's a second page here. That doesn't work well if I print it out. So I can change the margins here to narrow. Uh, still not working, so let's change the scale a little bit uh, to 95. And now this should work just well. You, you see if I'm scrolling down, it's just one list uh, on one page. Uh, so, so that's great. And, and I can do further configurations here, but also go here and export it, um, oops, export it uh, to PDF, HTML, or other office formats um, to exchange it with people, or I can mail it right from here and it will just open the mail from your mail client, putting that as an attachment. So um, that's available in almost all uh, grid views, in all screens where you have lists or, or these tables. So, for example, if I go here down to the details and I select uh, two of my machines, and these are both uh, my SQL servers, so if I go down here to the databases, here the database is combined from both. So now I can again right-click, say all objects, and here are my databases. I can use that to document or to send it over to someone else. Even areas where you uh, would not uh, expect it, like your security settings. If you have lots of user groups here and you want to document it, hit the export button, here you go. So that feature is available uh, in, in almost all of these screens. Uh, there are some other nice features, like uh, if you have uh, an event, uh, you can just uh, go there and say uh, Control C. And if you open the notepad and say control V, it copies the event you just selected in there with the headers. So um, that's nice to put in, into a mail. Or even nicer, you just open it, copy to clipboard, close it, you go back here, and here's your event with all your information. So so that's that's great to you know put it in a ticket in the mail or somewhere else. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of export functionality now in Control Center. All right, that sounds pretty good. Um, and just to follow up with that, ultimately, we, we hope that you find it easier to share that information that app managers collecting. Um, obviously, there's a lot of folks in your organization that can use it to put it to good use. And one of, one of the key things we wanted to make sure was that we made it easier for people to consume all that information. and and uh, be able to use it for troubleshooting, for capacity planning, and so forth. Right. So All right, the one next, more. Group. Sorry, go ahead, Mickey. Yeah, the next feature is pretty hard to show in a in a webinar. It would be kind of boring if you watch me installing the product. I have to <laughs> sing and dance a lot to make it interesting for you. So, um, so talking about installations, um, we we don't have anything to show here live, but the installation is is much quicker. Uh, we we asking you last questions. We you know, you put in your credentials. We use it on multiple screens if it's uh, uh, if needed or if it makes sense. So um, it's it's more streamlined. The entire process takes less time. And and then there's the other big big features: the well-behaving databases. So Control Center and the QDB are, are now pure databases. No longer require any uh, binaries on the same SQL server, and therefore they can be installed remotely. So you can have your um, SQL uh, database administrator installing the database for you 
uh, and he can do it from his workstation to your central SQL cluster. Uh, so there's no need to have dedicated hardware. Our databases work with any other database on the same machine, um, and they're much easier to maintain that way as, again, there's no registry entry and, and no binaries laid down on the SQL service. Same with the module. So if you install a module, uh, for sure the module VMO needs to go on the agent locally and you can use the deployment services for that. But the KS, the, the updated knowledge script, can be checked into the database remotely as well and you see that already with the AM7 uh, modules. As AM7 and AM8 share the same modules, there's only one module page by now. Uh, and uh, each much works with those versions. All right, thanks for that info. And that is our high-level summary of the features. Again, we've got a, a much more comprehensive document. Uh, and, of course, you're welcome to uh, download the trial version if you wanted to t test out some of these features for yourself. And the ultimately the upgrade version is available as well. But before you go upgrading, we'd like to give you some information about the adoption path and some uh, advice along those lines. Right. So as I said at the beginning, uh, we come to that point later, what you get with, with what component. So um, with, with AppManage 8, you, you have uh, the ability to do a phased approach. You can start with Control Center only. And by installing Control Center, you also need to upgrade your primary QDB to an AM8 QDB. But all your other QDBs can stay on 7 and there's no limitation. For sure you won't get some features that are available with the AM8 QDB such as the AM Health. However, you will get all the control center features, the, the, the central, the single uh, UI, the responsiveness, uh, the improved uh, synchronization and backend process and everything you've seen here on control center. So once you have done control center and your users get the new UI and they're all happy and settled. You can move on with updating the remaining QDBs. And when you do that, you get uh, also some improvements in the QDB to give you uh, more performance in terms of communication between QDB and agent and, and control center. But also you get the AM health feature. Um, it's, it's one of the big features you get in here with, with that update. Once your QDB is all updated and control center is updated, your agent can be still on AM7. There's no problem with that. However, the Delta discovery only works on the AM8 agent. So that, if you like, can come last. And then, uh, you know, agent by agent, you can uh, use the deployment services to upgrade them to 8 or leave them on 7 if you don't require the Delta discovery and everything should work fine. So this is the phased approach. You don't need to do it all at once. However, if all components are on one machine, then yes, you need to do it all at once as we don't allow uh, mixed uh, versions on the same machine. However, we allow mixed versions in the same environment. All right, and uh, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, our, we will have a webinar on upgrading coming up soon. And uh, actually, I'll be mentioning that in a little more detail in a moment. Right. Uh, with that, Mickey, how can we find out some more details? Here you go. So there's the new uh, community group called AppManage HQ. Uh, the App Manager product management team is running that group, and you see there are posts uh, from Joseph and me, and you will get uh, more details on things like Delta Discovery or AM Health. So there are a lot of videos, a lot of uh, good information on, on this group. Uh, so sign up, uh, you, you just go to the groups, you, you pick the group, you sign up, it automatically makes you a member and then you can view the content. Uh, and you can use that to leave comments and uh, get in touch with us. Great. And uh, of course I mentioned earlier we're coming up uh, on March 14th, look for that upgrade webinar, you'll be getting an email about that and it will be similar in format to what we've done today. So now we've, we're basically at the end of our webcast. There's a, a few more minutes for some question and answer, and we're going to try and, and get through as many of those as we can. We're going to leave the summary page up. Uh, it basically talks about a lot of the, the key things that we, we pointed out there. So if that helps you uh, remember a question that you had earlier that you haven't already put in, feel free to, to put that in as well. 
and we'll follow up with you if we can't uh, get to your question on the call. So, Mickey, we've had a couple of questions about the uh, the web console and what what new things we have available there. Uh, would you like to explain our, our approach and, and what we've done to release some new products in that area? Right, right. So, so the web console hasn't changed in AM8. Um, it supports new platforms. Uh, however, the functionality of the web console is still um, limited to uh, QDB, single QDB connections. It doesn't connect to control center. However, um, we have released a, a, a new product and then we have a new product available that support uh, NetIQ Operations Center and that uh, product has adapters to AppManage and Control Center and we just released the adapter for AppManage 8 as well. So with that uh, product you have a very nice a uh, web page that uh, can be configured as a dashboard as well and it will show uh, operational information such as uh, your tree view status information, your events, uh, performance data charting and service maps on the web page and you can uh, define what each user will see on his page and he can have multiply of these pages so you can really design uh, views for, for each user group or each user or your clients uh, to give them uh, operational information such as up-down status uh, of, you know, of your machine's response time or whatever by leveraging the service maps and uh, the other functionality we have there. So that is available already. It's also available for App Manager 7 uh, and it might be something you like to talk to your NetIQ sales rep to to get a demo of that. And that's the App Manager Operations Portal. Right. All right. Um, another question. Can monitoring policies be inherited by lower level management groups and control center in App Manager 8 as is currently available in the operator console? Say again? Can monitoring policies be inherited by lower level no. management okay. groups? No, 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 it cannot. Okay. There's no inheritance of uh, monitoring policies. Um, I, I, I see the request there, I see the idea, um, but there, there's also some uh, problems with that. So we, we only inherit the uh, security settings, but not the policies. Okay. Uh, can we modify an action on a job being deployed using a policy? So I'm not sure I understand that. Uh, correctly. So you can definitely define actions with policies. Um, I don't understand how do you deploy just an action with a policy. The action goes with a job and each job and a policy can have an action for sure. Um, there's also something we haven't showed here uh, because of time but you can find a video on the uh, community group we just showed you talking about the new deployment and propagation dialogue we have with AM8 uh, where you can uh, propagate uh, changes of AKS also such as an action um, uh, to, to your jobs and also to rename jobs. Okay. Will agents be allowed to connect to more than two MSs? He, so, okay. that that. <laughs> that might be a question for the next webinar. It's, it's, um, so the simple answer is yes, uh, but then people ask me, there's only the primary and secondary you can have uh, on the agent in the registry. Actually, the registry settings are not that important for the agent and they are not used for any of the communication. The settings are really uh, in the back end and, and there are ways uh, to make all your management service uh, taking care of all your agents. However, if you do that, you need to make sure that all your management service can connect to each agent. And we prefer to have a primary, secondary set. Um, so th there, there are ways to approach that. And, and I would uh, recommend professional services here uh, to give you more guidance on that as it's really uh, a bigger topic I cannot just uh, answer in a few sentences here. Travis? Okay, seems like we we lost Travis again. So um, let me see if there are any more questions. 
and we're almost over in time, so I'm not able to see the questions here, unfortunately. So if we uh, don't get Travis back, um, I think that is what we have for today, and uh, if you have more questions and um, want to know more about App Manager, uh, you can always contact your uh, NetAQ sales rep, but you can also contact us on community, and we will do our best to answer your questions.